Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a radical equation. We have the cube root of 1 plus square root of x equals the square root of 1 plus the cube root of x. And we're going to be solving for x values. I'll be presenting two methods. Let's start with the first one. That's first. For my first method, I'm going to set d is equal to something. You know, substitution is a really cool method, and we're going to use it. So let's go ahead and set both of these expressions equal to y, and don't ask why. Now, after this, we get two equations, or a system of equations. Uh, we can go ahead and take the first one and cube both sides. That's going to give us the following. 1 plus square root of x equals y cubed. Let's go ahead and isolate square root of x from here. Square root of x becomes y cubed minus 1. Now, we want to get rid of all the radicals, so let's go ahead and square both sides. And that's going to give us the following. When we square both sides, we're going to get x equals y to the 6 minus 2y cubed plus 1. So that is the x value. Let's go ahead and save it. And now we're going to go ahead and do the same thing with the square root. With the square root, I have... If you square both sides, you're going to get 1 plus the cube root of x equals y squared. So I'm taking these two equations and squaring both sides, all right? When we square both sides, we're going to get 1 plus cube root of x equals y squared. And then if you isolate, just like the other one, if you isolate cube root of x, you get y squared minus 1. And at this point, go ahead and cube both sides. Not square because we have a cube root, so you have to raise both sides to the third power. That gives us x equals y to the 6 minus 2y squared. Uh-oh, that's not the case because this is a cubic. So that's y to the 6 minus 3y to the 4th plus 3y squared minus 1. Great. So that's another value for x. And obviously, we're talking about the same x here because we want to solve this equation for x. So let's go ahead and set these two equations equal to each other. Right? That makes sense, doesn't it? So I'm going to start with the top one y to the 6th minus 2y cubed plus 1, set it equal to y to the 6th minus 3y to the 4th plus 3y squared minus 1. Notice that y to the 6th power is going to cancel out, which is nice. So we got rid of the 6th powers. And if you put everything on the same side, maybe the left-hand side would be ideal because uh, y to the 4th will be positive that way. So we got 3y to the 4th minus 2y cubed and then I kind of keep track of it by underlining, minus 3y squared plus 1 plus 1, that's going to give us a plus 2, and the whole thing is equal to 0. Now, a lot of times uh, with polynomial equations, one thing you should always check is the sum of the coefficients, and then the sum of the odds and the sum of the evens, and see if whether uh, y equals 1 or y equals negative 1 is a possible solution. In this case, we notice that 3 plus 2 is 5, and then minus 5 gives us zero. So the sum of the coefficients is zero, which means y equals one is a solution. And there is a good reason why y equals y, y equals one is a solution. Because if you go ahead and group these terms like this and like that, and factor, you can take out 3y squared, you get y squared minus one. And then the other two, you can take out a negative two and you get y cubed minus one. Notice that both y squared minus 1 and the y cubed minus 1 has y minus 1 as a factor. So let's go ahead and break it down even further. y minus 1, y plus 1 from difference of two squares, and this is difference of two cubes. Awesome. So really cool review of algebra here if you're dealing with factoring. Now y minus 1 is a common factor, so let's go ahead and take it out. This proves one more time that y equals 1 is a solution, but... There are more surprises coming up. So let's go ahead and distribute it. 3y cubed plus 3y squared. And then I'm just going to go ahead and distribute the negative 2 over here. Negative 2y squared minus 2y or negative 2y minus 2. The whole thing is equal to 0. The second factor can be simplified. 3y cubed plus y squared minus 2y minus 2 equals 0. Uh-oh. If you check the sum of the coefficients, the, it's 0 again, which means y equals 1 is a possible solution, but the factoring is not that straightforward, so you can kind of go ahead and work it out. You know, one of the methods that we used was 
break this down like 3y cubed minus 3y squared and then to make up you have to add 4y squared and then you have to subtract 4y to make y minus 1 a factor and then you have to add 2y to make up for the difference and then you have to subtract the minus 2 at the end and this gives you that y minus 1 is going to be a common factor and you can go ahead and factor it out. When you do, you get the following. You get y minus 1 times y minus 1 which is going to give you y minus 1 quantity squared. The other factor is just going to be 3y cubed actually not 3y squared, 3y squared, 3y squared plus 4y plus 2. And that equals 0, which means y equals 1 is a solution. It is like a double root, but it doesn't matter. We don't care. It's just y equals 1 is a valid solution. But remember, we're not looking for y, and you know why, hopefully. We're looking for x, right? But we got y equals 1. So let's go ahead and plug it in. Now, where do we plug it in? You can go ahead and use these six powers, but that's not needed. Let's go ahead and use one of the radicals because it's going to be much, much easier. Since y equals 1 is a valid solution, why don't we use the cube root? Cube root of 1 plus square root of x. This is what y equals, right? Remember? And we know that y is equal to 1. If you cube both sides, you get 1 plus square root of x equals 1, which means square root of x equals 0, which means x equals 0. If you check the square root, you're going to get the exact same answer which means x equals 0 happens to be a valid solution. What about the uh, quadratic here? We have a quadratic. If you check the discriminant of that quadratic, b squared minus 4 times a times c, you're going to notice that you get a negative discriminant, which means there are no real solutions. Are there complex solutions? Definitely. You can go ahead and find those in terms of i, and then set that equal to whatever, and then you know you can evaluate x from there. All right, great. So that gives us basically we only have one real solution. And I'll tell you in a little bit because I'm going to show you the graph at the end. I'm also going to talk about the, the domain of this equation. You, we could also talk about this before we started solving it, but I just want to save it for the end. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about the second method. All right, so for my second method, let me rewrite the equations. I'm going to go ahead and set something that will get rid of the radicals inside the radicals. Now I have a square root, I have a cube root. So think about 2 and 3. What is the least common multiple of 2 and 3? It's 6, right? So I'm going to set x equal to u to the power 6. And that's going to give me the following. Square root of x is going to be u cubed. And the cube root of x, of course, we're assuming that uh, you know, x is positive, u is positive, so on and so forth. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. x needs to be positive, right, obviously, or non-negative, I should say. So cube root of x is going to be u squared. Let's go ahead and do the replacements. We get cube root of 1 plus u squared equals the square root of 1 plus u cubed. So we still have radicals, but inside the radicals, it's much, much better. Let's go ahead and raise both sides to the sixth power because we want to get rid of all the radicals. And when we do, we're going to get rid of all the radicals. Now, when you raise a cube root to the 6th power, it's going to be like 6 thirds, which is 2. So it's equivalent to 1 plus u squared squared. And this is equivalent to 1 plus u cubed. So 6 and the 3 kind of cancel out. Makes sense. And here, the uh, 6 divided by 2 is 3. So they are also going to cancel out. Make sense? Okay, awesome. So... We're going to get something like this from here, and let's see what this is going to give us. Okay? All right, awesome. So, by the way, we have to be, we have to check this. Okay, real quick, right here. It's supposed to be u cubed, and this is supposed to be u squared. Here we go. Okay, so this is going to be u cubed, and this is going to be u squared. Awesome. And now, this is the correct equation because we replace square root of x with u cubed, so that should be u cubed, not u squared. All right, awesome. Now let's go ahead and square the left-hand side. We get 1 plus 2u cubed plus u to the 6th power. The right-hand side is going to give us something similar to what we did before, but it's going to be 1 plus 3u uh, squared plus 3u to the 4th plus u to the 6th. u to the 6th is going to cancel out, but also 1 is going to cancel out, which is really nice. If you put everything on the same side, we're going to notice something real cool here. So we're going to bring the 2u cubed over here. Everything else is going to stay. 
and set it equal to zero, notice that u squared can be factored out, which is really cool, right? Three, so that gives us three u squared inside the parentheses, minus two u, yay, this is what I was waiting for, and plus three is equal to zero. Happy birthday to you, if it's your birthday. So now we get from here u squared equals zero, or that is equivalent to u equals zero, and we'll, we'll talk about that, but this again gives us a negative discriminant, which means there is going to be no real solutions from that branch. Now, when u is equal to zero, what is u? u is the, what is u, right? That's a good question. Well, x is equal to u to the sixth power, so u is going to be the sixth root of x. So the sixth root of x is equal to u, but u is zero, therefore x is equal to zero. Obviously, that's going to be a valid solution, like I said before, and that is going to be the only real solution. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph, and we'll briefly talk about the domain. So here's two graphs, the cube root of 1 plus square root of x, the original ones, and the square root of 1 plus cube root of x. Notice that on the orange one, which is the square root of 1 plus something, we notice that uh, the domain is negative 1 to infinity. Why? Because you have a square root which uh, the inside needs to be greater or equal to 0, so we have the condition 1 plus cube root of x greater or equal to 0. This means the cube root of x needs to be greater or equal to negative 1, which means x needs to be greater or equal to negative 1. You can cube both sides, right? So that is the requirement for the orange one. But for the, is that green or blue? Anyways, whatever the color is, right? So it kind of looks like blue, I think, more blue. So, uh, so that color, the cube root function, uh, has a different domain because notice the presence of square root of x, it dictates that x needs to be greater than or equal to 0. And the only intersection point is at 0, comma 0. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.